Hello, HMS 7th graders. Today's lesson is going to be on career awareness. Thinking about your future career that you're going to have. First of all, I want to start with an awesome lesson that I wish I was there in the classroom with you. It's just called Agree or Disagree. And as your teacher is playing this, just think in your mind if you agree or disagree. If your teacher would like to uh, pause this lesson and have a little more discussion, you can. However, be respectful in your answers, and I will give some reasoning behind the statement after it goes through. Okay, so agree or disagree, just think in your mind which one you agree with. First statement. We'll start with an easy one. It is easy to pick a career. Agree or disagree? Depending on your thoughts and interests, you might already have an idea. And you might say, yep, this is an easy one. Or you might say, no, there are so many jobs out there. I don't know what my career is going to be. But we're going to help work on that over these next couple of days and also into the future years as you're here at HMS. Number two, when choosing a career, it's good for you to find out how much money you would make doing it. Agree or disagree? You might be thinking that you'd like to make a million dollars. You'd like to be a billionaire. Some of you would just like to do a career and not worry so much about the pay. All your personal interests and values of what you're thinking about as far as the job and money. When it always comes to money and picking a career, I always encourage students just to make sure that whatever career you pick, you make enough that you can support your family. If you want to have a house, if you want to have three cars, if you want to have a huge yacht that you can go out in Lake Michigan in or down in the ocean and you want to travel a lot, all depends on you. But at least have enough to support your family. Next one. Most people aren't happy with their work. Agree or disagree? Now, you might have some stories, some parents, some relatives, some friends who absolutely hate their job. Or you might know some people that do really enjoy their job. I would hope that you pick a career that you enjoy. If not, change it. Find another one. Find something that you enjoy doing for your career. Number six, most careers are boring. Agree or disagree? If this is you, well, something to think about. If all careers that you know of are boring, maybe there's some more out there that would be interest you, and be more exciting for you that are not so boring. This is one we got to be respectful of. Let's think about this one. Males are better at certain careers than females. Agree or disagree? Can you think of an example? Males are better at certain careers than females. Hmm. Number 11. For our next one. Females are better at certain careers than males. I wish I could see the look on your faces and your answers. Females are better at certain careers than males. Well, let's sum all of these up together. I don't know of a job that a female has that a male can't do. Let's think about a few common ones that might come to mind. You might say nursing. Nursing is a career that traditionally has been females. However, they are in high demand for male nurses. High paying, great jobs, great benefits for males who want to be nurses. Here's another one. Construction worker. You might think that what forever the reason, only males can be construction workers. Absolutely false. You can be a female in the construction world. I've talked to several of them, asked them how they get through it, and I had one lady tell me a great story. You might think that I cannot lift the heavy things that a male construction worker does, is what she reported. And she laughed, saying, I'm just smarter than them. So I would go get the forklift, the crane, the tractor to lift whatever I need lifted. And I've talked to several females in the construction industry. 
and they're doing very, very well. I'll have some follow-up videos of some females in the construction industry. Let's think about another one. How about a hairstylist? Can only females be hairstylists? No, not at all. There are lots of males who do hairstyling, haircutting, all the different things around cosmetology. So when you think about males and female careers, we are learning that males and females can do both. That's what interests you, what you want to get into, what you would enjoy doing. There's a term for this that I'll introduce, and it's called non-traditional careers. Non-traditional careers. Think about the nursing. Traditionally, you would think about females. However, there are a lot of males that are in high demand that need to go into the nursing. And that would be considered a non-traditional career. Um, how about this one? At one time, teachers traditionally were female. And you might find as you get up into some of the higher grade levels that that is not the case anymore. There's a lot of males in education. So a good one to think about, kind of a fun one to think about, just about any career you can think of, there's males and females. And so it has to be that non-traditional performance career. Last one, agree or disagree. There are way too many career choices. Whether you agree or disagree, I'm going to help you over these next couple of years and even into high school. Think about what careers interest you. And take that big world of careers with so many that are out there and help narrow them down to a few that interest you that you can think of. Uh, last year you might remember about the career pathway. I always encourage you to jump on a career pathway and investigate those careers in that career pathway. I'm not saying you got to pick a job now that you're going to do for the rest of your life. No, it might change. But jump on that career pathway, explore it, talk to people, and see what's out there along those lines. Well, I wish I was with you and we could do more of these agree and disagree um, questions, but it's a great activity and we're going to have to go on. Oops. So you want to think about you personally, kind of your self awareness of what might lead to a career that interests you. In this idea of thinking about yourself, what are your interests? What are your talents? What are your skills? What are your values? What's your personality? Can all help you picking your path to a great career. For example, what interests do you have? You might have some specific interests, let's say in animals, that you want to turn into a career. Maybe you have a specific interest in automobiles that you want to turn into a career. Maybe you have an interest in robots and you want to turn that into a career. Whatever your interest might be, that might be something you want to investigate. What talents do you have? Some of you might have some music ability and other talents that others don't that you can turn into a career. What skills? Maybe you've already learned some things. Maybe you have volunteered somewhere or somebody has taught you some things that you want to turn into a career. What values do you have? These might be the beliefs and values and things that you and your family hold dear that might turn into a career for you. Lastly, what's your personality? You might not think of your personality, but it does have a lot to do with your career. Are you outgoing? Are you energetic? Would you rather do things on your own? Are you a leader? Are you vocal? Your personality can really lead to a great career for you. And that's what we want to focus in on today. Your personality. There are a lot of different personality differences. Researchers and scientists have kind of narrowed it down to eight main differences in personality. And I'm going to read through these and help you understand some of these. Later on, we're going to do an activity that really narrows down what your personality is so we can learn from that personality and help decide what career is best for you. So as I'm reading through these, think about which one you are. Each one kind of has two sides of the coin. Are you an introvert or an extrovert? And I will help you decide through these and then we'll actually take a personality test which will help you decide who you are. So just kind of listen, see which one you kind of think you are, and then we'll take a personality test to help decide who you are. Okay? So the first one, are you an introvert? Introverts get their energy from their inner thoughts and ideas. They enjoy spending time alone or with one or two other people. They may like to focus deeply on specific interests or hobby and tend to be good listeners. Introverts, get your energy kind of by yourself. Extroverts get their energy from the outside world and from interacting with lots of people. They enjoy being in groups of friends and like to talk. 
they tend to have lots of energy. So are you an introvert or an extrovert? It might actually be easier to think about some friends and people around you, brothers and sisters, parents. When you think of introvert and extrovert, can you pick out which friends and family members are introverts, get their energy kind of from being by themselves, or extroverts get their energy from being with lots of people? The next one, sensing and intuitive. Now, sensing, some people put the idea of practical next to, uh, but we'll just go with sensing for now. Sensors use their five senses understanding the world. They like concrete, detailed information and focus on the facts of the situation. They focus on past experiences and what is happening right in front of them. As opposed to intuitive thinkers. Intuitives think about the world in abstract terms. They focus on the big picture rather than on the detail. They like creating solutions and go with their gut instincts when making decisions. Sensors or intuitives? Next category, thinker feeler. Which one are you? Thinkers use facts to make decisions. They think about what is fair and what is logical and do not worry as much about how decisions will affect others' feelings. Feelers use their feelings to make decisions. They focus on how things will affect people involved and avoid conflict and offense when possible. They do not worry as much about something being fair as having it feel right. Thinkers, feelers. The last one, um, there's kind of two words for each of these. You might hear it called judgers, which are structured, or perceivers, sometimes used as unstructured. Judges. Judges have a planned, organized approach to the world. They work on a schedule, tend to be on time, and stick to their plans. They finish one thing before moving on to the other. Perceivers. Perceivers are flexible and spontaneous. They are able to change plans easily and do not need to hold to a fixed schedule. They do not always finish things that they start. So with your personality interests here, you are a combination of these categories. You might think that you're more an introvert, you might think you're a feeler, you might think you're a judge or structured person, but you also might think the opposite. Now, you might say, I just don't know, and I'm going to help you decide that as we continue on with this activity. But the combination of those traits will often give you some ideas of what careers you might be good at. So what you see here is the four letters, I-N-T-J, match up to I-N-T-J here. I-N-T-J people are imaginative and strategic thinkers with a plan for everything. Okay, here is a few example careers. Now, there's lots of careers that fit in here. I'm just giving you a few. E-N-F-P, those categories, E. N F P right? those people are enthusiastic, creative, sociable, free spirits who can always find a reason to smile. I S F P. I S F P. Those types of people, flexible and charming, artistic, always ready to explore experiences and new things. This idea of your personality has been brought into the combination of 16 different personalities. Research has found that the combination that people fit into are 16 different personalities. And we're going to be taking a test to help find out which personality of those 16 you are. After we take that test to find out which one best fits you, we can learn a lot about you. And there will be a website that will help you do this and kind of work your way through finding your personality, so how it affects your job and future career and people around you. It's a great tool now that you're in seventh grade that you can start thinking about yourself and your personality and how it relates to those around you. So some things to think about.